Hi, and welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 19th of June, 2016. My name is Don Bolt. I'm the senior pastor of the church, and for the next 10 minutes, I'd like to share the highlights of the message from this morning's service. First of all, it's Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to the fathers uh, that are watching this. And uh, for those of you that have taken the bold step of stepping up into a fathering role uh, outside of your family, uh, perhaps uh, you become separated from your children, or perhaps you never had uh, children born to you, uh, but you've nonetheless understood what it means to be a father and have stepped into that role in the community, I want to say God bless you and thank you for taking that bold step. Uh, and so we're going to take a look on Father's Day uh, into uh, just what God has to say to fathers. And, you know, and I want to begin by saying that I, I think that children tend to look at God as being a lot like uh, what was reflected to them through the relationship they had with their own natural father. Uh, you know, when I worked at Teen Challenge for all those years, um, it was amazing. Almost invariably, uh, people would come to me and say, well, I'm having a problem in my relationship with God. I said, what is it? Well, he seems distant. I don't feel like he's listening. Or, or maybe, you know, God seems angry at me. Or, you know, whatever it was, uh, a couple days later, I'd ask them, you know, tell me about your relationship with your father. And almost without any variability, they would describe the relationship that they had with their natural father the same way they described the problem that they're having with God. And so, man, I just want to say, I think that we have a very powerful, informative role to play in the lives of people, and a role that if we play it well gives people an invitation to seek God as their father and to find a God, a, God, a father is so much better than us, so much greater than us. All right, so let's take a look at some of God's men. All right, uh, these were people who God befriended and. Uh, those people befriended God as well, and they became friends of God. And the first one we're going to look at is Job. Job was, was a man who suffered a lot, lost everything. And uh, anyways, uh, so we're looking at him in, in Job 29, which to me is a parallel uh, for men uh, of the Proverbs 31 for women. Proverbs 31 describes this ideal woman. I think Job is describing his life in a way that is an ideal that we uh, as men can look at. And so he talks about uh, in, in, in uh, Job 29 verses 4 through 5, he says, as I was when I was in my prime uh, and when the friendship of God was over my tent, when the Almighty was with me and my children were all around me. And now Job is feeling separated from all of that. But now he's going to go on and talk about being a father to his people. He was not just a father in his home. He was a father in the community that he lived in because he would go to the city gates, which is where people brought their disputes. The elders would sit at the city gates, and if you had a dispute, you brought it to the elders, and they would uh, resolve these disputes in order to maintain peace and justice in those communities. And Job would go to this place, and I want you to listen to the description he gives of himself as he steps into this place and what kind of character he had. For when the ear heard, it called me blessed. And when the eye saw, it gave witness of me, because I delivered the poor who cried for help, and the orphan who had no helper. The blessing of the one ready to perish came upon me, and I made the widow's heart sing for joy. All right, listen to what he's saying, okay? He said, I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. Okay, and he, he's describing the kind of person that he was, and he talks about how that I was a father to the needy, and I investigated the case which I did not know. All right, and so here's this person, this 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 ideal man, this this person that we can look at and say, I'd like to, to be like he was. And, uh, and what do we see? We see that his attention uh, was on those who needed him to step into their lives and be a father and be a defender to them. All right, so let's go on. Abraham, he believed God, and uh, it was accounted to him for righteousness. But then James uh, tells us that, uh, that, that this caused him to become the friend of God. He was known to be the friend of God. All right, and so Genesis 18, 19 says that, uh, of, of, of Abraham, he says, I know him, I know Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him. And then and again, in James chapter 2, it tells us that uh, Abraham, because he believed God, was called the friend of God. All right, so again, uh, we see this, this character in him, all right, that, uh, that he believed God, that he had this friendship with God. All right, and then I want to say, if you want to be a good father, have a friendship with God. Jesus, next one we're going to take a look at here, the fullness of God dwelt in him, and a, a, a series on, on his character would take months to, to pursue. So I'm just going to summarize here. He was faithful, he was prayerful, he was wise, he was virtuous, he was humble, he was obedient, he was 
he was uh, patient, he was charitable, he was giving, and he was also forgiving. You know, and Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 24 gives us this view of the fruit of the Spirit, which I to told you in the previous message, uh, is really a way of, of saying that this is uh, our opportunity through the work of the Holy Spirit to show the character of Christ. And it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All right? And it says, and those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And what it's saying there is that we've removed things from our lives through the authority that God has given to us uh, in, in an effort to make room in our lives for these other things that need to show forth so that we can uh, be men, we can be women, we can be fathers uh, that reflect the character of Christ. And then uh, finally, uh, as far as God's men to look at, I want to look at, at this uh, qualifications for being an elder or an overseer in the body. And it says that those people need to be above reproach. They need to have a certain dignity about them. They need to be a person that is not held suspect. They need to be a husband of one wife, temperate, patience, uh, and respectable. <coughs> Excuse me, hospitable, able to teach, and not addicted to much wine. All right, it, it goes on to give this description. They need to be uh, not, not, not brawlers. They need to be gentle. They need to be peaceable. All right, and uh, they need to be a person's free from the love of money. And it goes on to talk about this dignity that they have. All right, and so uh, it's, it says he must have a good reputation with those outside. And so that he won't fall into reproach in the snare of the devil. All right. So again, these these qualities. But then I, I, I want to make this point. God seems willing to work with people who lack uh, a perfect record on these 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 very qualities. And I remember there was a time in our lives where we really desperately needed uh, to hear from God, and there was a person who had a prophetic gift, and they happened to be visiting, and they spoke some things over us that were, I mean, I, undeniably, they were God speaking to us. And so I began to look into this person a little bit and found that they had a very checkered reputation. And I was like, God, I mean, wait, but, 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 I mean, he, he, he spoke for you, and, then, and, and I, I didn't understand. But then the more that I started to understand that, that, you know, that God is willing to forgive and to look beyond uh, and use people. I, I looked at the roll call of the heroes of faith over in Hebrews chapter 11 and was amazed uh, to find in verses 31 and 32, Rahab the harlot. Wow. I mean, you know, we know what a harlot was, okay? And she uh, protected the spies that came in uh, to spy out the land. And so, you know, and it talks about her in the roll call of the heroes of faith, Barak. He showed power to Samson. Well, uh, him and Delilah, that's a stretch to understand why God would use such a person. Jephthah, illegitimate son of a prostitute who uh, was such a, an outlier that he, that he and, and, and 400 people that were not good people uh, lived outside of town, but God nonetheless used them to deliver Israel. And David, of course, we know that though he was a man after God's own heart, uh, he also sinned with Bathsheba. Now, why do I share this with you? Because... If you're a man and you're backing off of a fatherly role because you think, well, I've got imperfections in my life that would mean that God wouldn't want to use me, I want to tell you you're mistaken. All right, step up. You know, step up and call upon God and, uh, and ask God to help you to deal with those things that, that are the defects that are in you. But then step up into the role that God has for you and use the gift that you have. All right, we all fall short. Romans chapter 3, verses 23 and 24 tell us that we all fall short of the glory of God. It goes on to say that, that what we have, though, is that we are justified by the gift of His grace through the redemption that we have through Christ Jesus. And so to, to take that as your confidence, uh, put away uh, the things that would hinder you from being effective at this ministry and step up into it and be a father. All right. So, uh, you know, it, I, I think of this song by Chris Tomlinson, You're a Good, Good Father. You know, that's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. And I think sometimes when people sing, they think, I, I, am I putting myself on a par with God by singing this? But no, what you're saying is that the, that the love of God that you've experienced is what defines you. And I would encourage you that, that let the love of God define you and then step up into the role that God has for you. As followers of Christ, okay, we are formed by our relationship relationship with God. All right, John, uh, chapter, first John chapter uh, 4, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm doing this with, 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 without my glasses today for a reason, but notice it's, it's, it says this, let us love one another because love is from God and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that does not love does not know God because God is love. Okay, in, in this love, the love it's, it's not that, uh, that we love God, but that he loved us, all right, and that he sent his son to take away our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. And, so, and to understand this place as a father, to be a person who loves and encourages and blesses and protects and does all these things, all right? And the great wonder of being a father is that people are formed by the relationship with us. 
all right, and that we are inadequate reflections of the character of God, but nonetheless we stand and uh, we, we, we minister that into the lives of people to encourage them to look beyond us and to see a God who loves them very much. The truth is that we are deeply affected by what our fathers passed on to us, but we're not controlled by it. I know people that have had good fathers and turned away. I've known people that have had terrible relationships with their father and yet have sought God and, and have, have turned and, and lived powerful, wonderful lives, you know, and that there's a healing uh, to be found in seeing God uh, as that Abba, Father, that, that Father who loves you, who accepts you, receives you, and then turns you around to be a father to others. And though we are inadequate reflections, I want to say this, that, uh, that God intends to use us. And so, happy Father's Day, and we'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.